All right, a few additional tricks I want to show you here. So you got a crate, and you have this texture, and it's on 1024. Now, right-click and reveal in Finder. Go in here and right-click on the TIFF, and take it and duplicate it. And I'm just going to put an M for normal map. Okay. And if I go back to Unity, I now have two. And on the NM, what I want to do is generate a bump map and apply. Make sure you make a backup of this before you do it. So that's what I always do is like make a duplicate copy. And under material, you're going to find out that this is just a diffuse material, but you can use a different kind of diffuse material. You can use uh, something like... Uh, bumped diffused okay and then you can launch the normal map into this so now you can see it has some substance to it perfect all right now you can also choose the bumpiness down here so if you want to choose a little bit less bump on it, you can do that. And it'll automatically update. Because sometimes a little bit too much bump gives it away too much right there. Yeah, it looks a little hard edge. So that's you gotta choose what kind of uh bumpiness you want on it. There we go, that looks a little bit better. Now, when you get done making your crate, it lives out here in this world, but as I said, you know, there's a few things that you might wanna do. You might wanna make it a prefab, but you wanna get everything intact. Right now, uh, there's no mesh collider on this object. So if I hit play, it just, it's just gonna stay there. It's not gonna crash to the ground or anything like that. So let's do a few things. Let's delete this first. And then go into create FPX. And you can see in here, I have the ability. Um, it usually said something about make colliders, generate colliders. Okay. So by generating a collider, I can go and now in physics, you see there is a mesh collider, but it's grayed out. Well, if I click and drag this out to my scene and apply it, okay, it'll attach a mesh collider automatically to it. Isn't that cool? And this way, the collider and the object get scaled at the same time. If you try to do it before the fact, if you go to scale it and then add a collider to it, the collider is going to be either bigger or smaller corresponding to what you scaled it. So it's always good to have it over here, then generate the collider, and then it should be all right. And you're, you're still not out of the woods. Um, I can use a convex collider, okay? Or I can drop this down, and you can see that it made a collider called Crate FBX. And you don't see it because it's attached right to the side of the object. Convex will make a bunch of polygons corresponding going around it, and then kind of wrap it in polygons. You don't want that, you want the actual uh, one that it generated from. And now if you go in here to physics and add a rigid body to it, it says losing prefab. Well, I never had a prefab to begin with. So there we go, we have a box and I can not do a whole lot with it other than walk up to it. But I don't crash through it because it's got a box collider to it. All right, when you get everything perfect, that's when you make a prefab out of it. And the advantage of this is it holds all that information. It holds uh, the material, the textures, the everything all built into one. So that's why we make a prefab. And then we can get rid of this one. 
and then we can get rid of this one if we wanted to. And I, just to test my prefab out, I can just click and drag that out. And voila, it's the same scale. It's got the same texture. It's got the same bump. And it's got everything attached to it. And that's the idea behind a prefab. All right, I hope you enjoyed the import or the exporting out of Maya into Unity and how that works. When you get done with this project, go on to the next.